Hi, my name is Forrest Mims and I do science and that's what we're going to talk about. How to do a science fair project. No matter what your future goals may be, participating in at least one science fair project before you graduate from high school can do major things for your career. It'll provide knowledge and experience that you would never learn in a classroom because you're learning on your own or maybe with some help, but you're doing it on your own, you're not reading somebody else's book. All three of my children did very impressive science projects that played important roles in their career. Eric detected earthquakes and underground nuclear tests with a homemade seismometer of a type never before invented. He then became uh, the, uh, the IT director at the University of Houston, Victoria, which he's been doing for many years now. Uh, Vicki, our, se our second child, uh, she did major projects involving detecting solar flares, the rotation of the sun, the effects of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere and so forth and her public speaking experience led her into working for MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. So now she heads, she gives big conferences and speeches and she traces all of her abilities to do that back to her science fair experience talking to the judges and the others in charge. And then Sarah, uh, who began her science fair projects in the first grade, uh, she, she uh, made a major discovery which led to international publicity and being hosted by NASA on a four-page website, being exhibited at the Smithsonian Natural History Museum in Washington, and we'll talk about some of that a little later. Now, none of my science fair projects won any major awards. I think I got a couple little pins that said maybe I was a third place or something. But my best science project was an analog computer I built in high school. It translated 20 words of Russian into English or vice versa. And while it didn't win an award, it's now, it's now uh, at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, and it's considered one of the very first amateur computers. So I've never forgotten about the influence that project had on my career and my life, and that's why I'm here today. I still do science. I build instruments that monitor the atmosphere. I build instruments that monitor the sun's ultraviolet radiation. Uh, NASA has sent me to Brazil twice to measure smoke during the burning season down there and I've done a lot of other consulting for NASA and NOAA and various government projects. My degree's in government, but that doesn't matter. I do the science and that's what matters. Now please consider making some plans now for doing a science project, and we're gonna explain why. Even if it's not required, no matter what path you choose after high school, even if you don't go to college, a science fair project is going to enhance your skills, your knowledge, and your abilities. It's also gonna give you enormous self-confidence, especially when you're speaking to groups and other people, including professionals. You're gonna learn about art when you make your poster. You're gonna learn about history when you research the history of the science that you're studying. You're going to learn about writing when you write your report. And you're going to learn how to plan and interact with the science professionals who judge and evaluate your science fair project. Now, your project might have a bonus. You might even win some cash awards or college scholarships. All three of my children did when they did their science projects you have just as good a chance as they do if you do the right thing. What is a science fair project? The word science comes from a Latin word meaning or called scientia or scientia. It means knowledge. So that means science can apply to all sorts of topics. If you're cooking a new recipe of your own design in a kitchen, you're doing a science project. You're employing knowledge to do something new. It can apply to politics. So there's economic science, there's political science, there's cooking science, there's veterinary science, there's medical science, and various other forms of science. What we're going to emphasize today is the science that applies to an organized search for knowledge about the natural world. Science can also be based on engineering projects, like my son's seismometer, but he used that engineering project to detect things that affect the natural world, namely earthquakes. And he could detect earthquakes around the world with a project he built for just a few dollars. Using, and then he used his home computer to, to uh, collect the data. Now these projects aren't as common as some of the projects, but they can be quite spectacular. Robotics projects can also be stunning, and, and you can learn much from those. Why do a science fair project in the first place? Science fairs are events, public events, where students display, display the projects they've done over the previous several months. Some of them may be for a previous year. And not everyone is interested in these projects. Why are those students there in the first place? Maybe their interest is in history or music or art or literature or physical education. I know students who've graduated in all those fields who did great science fair projects. And why did they do those projects? Because participating in those projects taught them much about other aspects of their work that led into their career. For example, they learned how to document their personal research, they learned how to evaluate facts, 
They learned how to make creative and attractive posters that describe their project. They learned about public speaking. They learned how to write good, solid reading reports. All these things working together are very important for re reasons for doing a science project. And then there's another reason that some people think about, and that's the money and scholarships that you can earn. All three of my children uh, receive college scholarships and cash money for their excellent high school science fair projects. Now, even if science isn't among your favorite subjects, and it often isn't, you can still broaden your knowledge base and learn much about other subjects by doing a science fair project. The project is going to do these things. It's going to let you think of an idea for the project. We'll get back to that later. It's going to show you how to plan and organize your project. Folks, if you don't know how to organize your time in life, you're just not going to make it. Your boss is going to be displeased, your mate is going to be displeased, and ultimately you're going to be displeased. A science project is going to help you organize your time better than anything else you can do. You're going to learn how to research your science project topic online or in a library. You're going to learn how to analyze data. Why is that important? The media is full of data. If you eat this, you're going to get cancer. Or if you don't drink this, you're going to get cancer. There's all these facts that are in the news media that are very confusing if you don't know how to analyze them. And how do you analyze them? You go online and you look up that topic and then you look at all the other topics against that topic. So you need to know how to analyze data as you go through life. And a science project will teach you that better than anything else. You learn, learn how to make graphs and charts and how to understand them. Graphs and charts have become super important. Look at the graphs that show the expenses from hurricanes that have struck the United States. Look at graphs that show air quality and how it's changed over the years. How do you interpret those? You need to understand that. You might even make an original discovery as uh, all three of my children have done in their science fair projects. You're gonna learn how to make quality photographs. You can use your phone to make those photographs. It doesn't have to be an expensive uh, 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 camera. You're going to learn how to make a visually appealing, attractive poster to display the key parts of your project. And finally, you're going to learn how to talk about your project, write a report, and visit with the judges who come to judge your project. I've watched so many children being interviewed by judges. It's a fascinating experience, not just for the student, but for the judges. The judges love to hear about the projects these kids have done. So be prepared to meet with them, talk with them, answer their questions, and answer them completely and honestly, and you'll find that they'll be very interested in your work. Now, how to find an idea for your science project. I know from personal experience that this is the biggest problem facing most science fair kids and, and their parents. Every year when school starts, I get emails and phone calls. Uh, Alice needs to do a science project for the 11th grade. Can you give her some ideas? And on and on I could go. Well, of course I could give her ideas. I could write a book of ideas. In fact, I've written a book about science projects. But you know there's a better way to do it. The best way is to go online, type in the words science fair projects in Google or some other search engine, and you will be amazed. Type in those words in Google, you'll get over 100,000 hits. Or better yet, go to my favorite project idea site, sciencebuddies.org science buddies run together as one word sciencebuddies.org i have no connection with those folks i don't know them all i know is they have a first class website with many ideas at all age groups and you can even fill out a questionnaire that asks you about your interests in various aspects of science and it will lead you to the projects that you might be best equipped to handle first class projects sciencebuddies.org go there for ideas now before you select your project there's several things you need to do you need to review the rules. Review the rules of your school science fair and how they interface with the rules of the International Science and Engineering Fair. Why the latter? Well, if your school lets you, or if you win a big award at your school, you may be going to a regional science fair and virtually all regional science fairs follow the rules of the International Science and Engineering Fair. So you wanna make sure that your project follows those rules also. And that may require uh, signatures and uh, dates on documents about you did this and you did that and you got permission to do this and for example if you uh, if you do a project involving uh, how heart rate changes when people run a mile or something like that you've got to have permission you have to have a medical permission to do that because it involves a human subject if you experiment with vertebrate animals like gerbils or lab rats or whatever get permission first and have the forms properly signed so that the international science and engineering staff knows that you haven't misused those animals uh, or the people that you're working with. That's rules. Number two, check the calendar. So many students uh, do a wonderful project, 
but they miss critical dates and then they can't enter their project in the International Science and Engineering Affiliated Science Fair because they didn't get their form signed on time. So check the calendar. If you read the rules, all the dates are there. And just mark those rules on your calendar. Talk to your teacher, talk to your parents about meeting the, date, the deadlines on those, uh, on those uh, calendars. Now you've done all these things, you've got one more to go. Supplies, make sure that the supplies that you want to use in your project are available. If they're too expensive, you've got a problem. So be sure that the supplies are available. You might need to borrow a multimeter from your school or a teacher or somebody like that, or maybe an adult, uh, one of your friends might have a, a, one of these. You might need to borrow a, some, some of these tools. Check with your teacher if you need to borrow a microscope or a laboratory balance or other scientific instruments. Then you will be ready to zero in on a specific project.